thank you everyone to join me um, to this meetup and uh, let's look at the basic commands on Git. And hopefully this session will be very entertaining and you can pick up some useful stuff from it. Um, so I'm a senior front-end designer and developer at Moixa. In case you don't know Moixa, Moixa is an internet of things battery management company. We visualize the batteries and electronic vehicles chargers data and provide some machine learning planners to make the electricity usage more efficient. And therefore we can encourage people to use clean energy. Um, so as for myself, I'm interested in the visual part of the programming. And I do digital illustrations and UX, I design interface. I use JavaScript to code the front end. And I'm particularly interested in Internet of Things. And that's why I ended up in Moixa and working for them. So as a developer and designer, um, I found some benefits from it because I don't have to do some pixel perfect designs for front end engineers to code. I can just program by myself. And I'm definitely involved in more stages of one product so I can get a better insight and I can develop things um, from that. But um, because I'm in two roles, I definitely have some shortage. For example, I can't um, be as ad advanced as those people who dedicate to one role. Um, that's why I still need to collaborate with others a lot at work. And Git is a perfect tool for us to collaborate. So um, Git is a tool and there are some companies that host the servers for Git. That means um, they are hosting the servers and you can upload the codes on their server. And the tools we usually use for Git is GitHub or Bitbucket. At least that's what I mostly use. Um, there are, of course, other tools. And today I'm going to mainly introduce how to use GitHub to um, manage the Git. So this is today's agenda. Feel free to ask any questions. Uh, I'm just going to go through some basic terms of Git to, um, that potentially can be really confusing. And I will um, make some examples to go through how to uh, create and clone repositories and work together on branches. So let's start it. Um, so this is my personal experience. When I was a kid, I was looking forward to the summer holiday, but um, there is one thing that upset me always, that's homework. Um, so as a kid, we just come up with some strategies that we split, for example, math homework. We split math homework into different parts and all the kids finish uh, one part. And at the end of the holiday, we gather together to copy each other. And it's a, it's a naughty thing, but it's the initial stage of collaborating. But there are some potential problems. For example, what if while I'm copying, I found some mistakes, um, but the rest of the group already copied. And I have to inform everyone to change that particular question. And what if everyone did that and someone noticed I was actually the person who did wrong. Everyone had to change back. So it's troublesome. And the other very, very bad thing is what if someone forget to bring the homework or it's entirely lost, then the whole group don't have anything to copy. So 
heat can help because everything is saved on the server, on the cloud, and all the changes will be recorded and save as commit history. So whenever there is a um, change, everyone will get for free and potentially someone can review it to see if this change is reasonable or not. And here comes two very important terms that is remote and local. So the thing we are very familiar with is the Google Doc. Um, you are using Google Doc and it's automatically saving things to the local disk and uploading it to a remote server. And all, all these things happen in a really short interval. So you can't really notice it, but that's exactly what it does. And Git does the same. The only difference is we have to tell the Git that it's time to push my local changes to the remote. So whenever you see these two terms, just think about Google Doc as an example, if you feel confused. Um, so Git on the server, we put all the files on the server, then that means everyone has access to this repository, can access it, and can they can get it from whatever devices. It doesn't have to be this particular one. And if you have the commits that only commit to your local branch, or um, yeah, local branches, you will only insist on your computer. That means if you change your computer, you can't see it. Local and remote talk to each other by push and pull commands. And we will look at them very soon. Here are two tools I use mainly. I use GitHub Desktop plus Terminal to do the Git commit because um, GitHub Desktop is a tool that I found really useful. I'm a designer and I like visual stuff. Um, this just give me really clear view of all the commit history, which branch I'm on and which repository. Um, it's just easy to use. And because it's simple, it actually um, contains many functions that's not so specific. It's more generic. So um, when I want to have a full control of what I'm doing, I turn to use terminal because um, the interface gives me limited function. And um, here is an example of my daily work. So I introduced two characters here. One is Carlotta, one is Pablo. Um, so let's say they work on different fields and put their work together on the cloud. That's the daily work. But today I want to introduce this example. So I want to simplify the complicated tasks in the daily base. I want to simplify into write letters A to Z as a goal and let's see, we split the homework and see how Carlotta and Pablo finish this by collaborating on Git. And Carlotta will do the letters A to M, Pablo will do the letters N to Z. Let's see how they use Git. I hope so far everything's clear. If you have any questions, just point out and I'm happy to answer. So first, we need to start a new project that is create a report from the local and push to remote. You can do it the other way around by using GitHub inter uh, website directly, but I want to show you just one of the way. And um, of course, we need to first register on GitHub and download the GitHub desktop. And those things are quite straightforward, so I skip them. Um, I hope there won't be any problems to do that. So once we install the GitHub desktop, first we create a new 
repository by clicking file and new repository button on the inter interface. And a window will pop up to ask you um, to write details of this repository. After filling all these details, the one local branch has been created. And you can simply hit this button on the UI to publish it to remote. So then that will be in the server. Alternatively, you can write the code and uh, from, from your terminal, but I usually just use the desktop because it's more straightforward to me. And these commands can be found on the internet. And I will paste a link to the tutorial, like just um, detailed uh, explaining the, all the command lines. Um, I will paste at the end. So um, today I'm just using the GitHub desktop and I created the branch on my local and also remote. Just um, so the local branch will have the same name as the remote one. And by default, it's called master. And the remote branch will have the origin as a convention. So whenever there is an origin, it's a remote branch. Now we move on to step two. We invite Pablo to collaborate. Um, I usually go to the GitHub website and I click settings, uh, manage access and invite a collaborator. Enter Pablo's email and he will be in your collaborator list. So Pablo now can access this repo. He just need to click the link that uh, he got from email and go to his GitHub account he can download this from the inter internet, the, the website interface. So if he clicks the download code, this green button, and click open with GitHub desktop, he can already see the repository in his local GitHub desktop, and he will have the local branch. Alternatively, he can write the code like clone, and copy from this button. This achieves the same goal. So let's see, Carlota has the local master and she published to remote as a ranging master and Pablo cloned it. So he has a master branch in local as well. Now they can work on, both of them can work on their local branches So let's start working. First, three commands, git add, git commit, git push. Um, we will look at Carlota as the example. So Carlota generates a letter A, she wrote it, and she's done with this letter. She wants to commit to master and then later push to origin master. So she runs git at A. That means it put all her changes into a package. And git add dot means, uh, dot means adding all the changes. If you want to add only one file, just write git add that file name. So um, dot just means everything. Carlota now commits everything. So she adds everything. And now she can run git commit dash m and give a message a, and it changes the commit's name, the package name to a. This dash m means message. So it's, a, it's just a message for the future yourself or the teammates to review this commit or fight this commit easily. Um, you can give it whatever name like at letter A, or I'm exhausted by writing this A, and the commit will have this message with it. So this commit actually pushes this package to the local branch and become a commit. 
your local master will have this package now. If we do git push, then the remote master will copy the change from master, from local master to itself. So we finish the first commit. Now let's do more. Pablo now also is working hard and he worked on the letter N. He does exactly the same as Carlota, adds this into the package and commit to his local master. Now, if Pablo wants to push, there will be a conflict because the remote master sees the history Pablo's history, a uh, local master branch doesn't have the history as remote does. So it will just stop Pablo from overwriting itself in case there are any commit history missing. So what Pablo needs to do is first get all the, com all the histories from origin master to the local master and then put his feature back to remote master. And what he does is git fetch all first. Git fetch is, um, you can think about git fetch as a refresh button on Google Doc. Like if the Google Doc is somehow lost the internet and doesn't have the latest updates, you will always refresh the page. Or let's say Gmail um, fetching new emails sometimes it's, um, you don't get, always get the newest emails and you simply click that button and you get everything refreshed to the newest one. So git fetch does something like that. Then Pablo does git pull rebase. And by default it's git pull merge, but rebase to me is more straightforward. So I will first introduce rebase and then I will talk about the difference between rebase and merge. So what rebase does is take out Pablo's commits and copy the, the history, commit history from origin master and put his new commits on the top. Now, if we compare the remote master and the local master, we can see both of them has the commit history A and Pablo's master, local master is newer. And now origin master is happy to take the new commits. So if Pablo does git push, then origin master will copy his new changes to the origin master. Now we unlock the pull and push. So we can look at the difference between merge and rebase. So this is, these two pictures are what I found from the internet and it's already like a, a more like visualized uh, thing, but I still found it quite confusing. Um, so git rebase is taking the new features and put on the top. Whereas git merge is take all the commits in time sequences and create a new header on the top. Yeah, I, I tried to understand that by myself, but it was so confusing until I really see how the commit goes. So I will show you guys how to do that. So first let's look at the rebase. We already talked about rebase before, so um, let's have a look again. For example, Pablo is committing something. At the same time, Carlota is pushing something to the origin master. And Pablo still commits to his local master. Carlota pushed to origin master again. Now, if Pablo wants to uh, push to origin master, it will definitely reject it because Pablo lack of C and B commit. If Pablo now do a git pull rebase, 
the local master take out what he does, these two commits, copy the arranging master and put his commits on the top. Now the histories are matched and he can do git push and his new commits will be pushed to arranging master. I always found rebase is more straightforward. And let's look at merge. So the same situation, they, does, they, they both did this. And anyone wants to ask any questions? Again, okay, let's continue. Um, so if now Pablo does the git merge, Uh, git pull merge, sorry. Then the master will put all these commits into time sequence and get the orange master merged to local master and create a merge header. Because the history is somehow changed, so uh, the local master has a merge header just to inform as a flag, let's say. So now, Pablo has all the new commits and he can do git push. And his new commits will be pushed to the orange master. So let's look at these two um, remote branches after doing git uh, rebase and merge. Um, the only difference I would say is um, git pull rebase, the result of git pull rebase, the remote master will have all the commits based on the time that it comes to the remote. But uh, git merge will have those commits come in time sequence that the commit is generated and created one more header on the top. So just um, pick the way you, you and your team prefer um, they both can achieve some certain goals. But the most important is to understand these two commands. So finally, let's create some more branches. Um, in the daily base, we always have a big project and we have to divide into smaller features and work on them. Um, that's what we usually do, but some features take days to finish. And during that, we also want to keep our commits, commit histories, or we want to keep our files safe. So we create branches and do exactly the same thing as we do in the master branch. And then later we merge or rebase those changes back to the main branch. Let's see how we do it in this A to Z scenario. So let's say Carlotta, she works really hard, but she somehow got tired and she wanted her father for help. Um, she was like, can you help me father? Like I'm so exhausted, but father said no. And Carlotta said, I saw you smoke this morning. If you don't want me to tell mom, you have to help me. And father was like, okay, but only one letter. I will do one E for you. And Carlotta said, okay, that's a deal. So Carlotta and her father will work on D and E. Um, first, Carlotta needs to create a new branch for her and her father to work on. So we, let's say the branch is called home from the desktop. GitHub desktop UI, it's straightforward. Just click new branch and there will be another window pops up, filling all the details and publish branch to the server. Alternatively, you can do git branch home and git checkout home, then push the home to the remote. Branch, git branch means create a new branch Git checkout means we switch to this branch. And working with branches, it's really important to uh, 
realize which branch exactly you are on. So always be very careful. So um, let's just look at this example. We first create the branch. Carlotta had this master branch. So the new branch will be branched out from the master. Her local branches will have the home branch now. And if she does publish, um, the, the origin, the remote will have a copy of her local branch from this home branch. So if father comes in, he needs to first git clone uh, from Carlotta's repository and he will be automatically in the default branch, which is the master. But if he does git checkout or switch uh, from the UI, he will have the home branch. So now both of them are on home branch. They can start working uh, without disturbing Pablo. So Carlota first committed D and she does git fetch, git pull rebase, git push and her changes is on the remote. Now, father did a E and he also needs to do exactly the same thing as what Pablo did. And he got the D in his local branch. He can do git push. His change will be on the origin home. So it's exactly the same process as Carlota and Pablo working on the master. Um, so now father finished his job. Carlota needs to get his change and merge her changes to the um, master branch. So let's look at rebase to master. Just be really clear which branch you are working on. Uh, otherwise there will be lots of direction problem. <laughs> And I will show you, it's getting messy, but we will um, try to understand. Um, so first, Carlotta is at her home branch and she does uh, git fetch all. Now, all the remote will be updates because it's updating all the remote um, branches. So you can see there are two commits from origin master from Pablo. And she need, what she needs to do is first get her father's commit and then get Pablo's commit, then push her commit. So first she does a pull rebase to get her father's commit from origin home because she's at the home branch and she needs to get the changes from the remote. Now she can switch. Um, she can switch to master because the origin home is already done. But before that, she needs to rebase from the origin master to make sure she gets all the uh, changes from the origin master. Now she check out to master and she's now on master branch. Master branch is needs to get all the changes from the home branch and then push to origin, branch, uh, origin master branch. So first pull rebase, get the origin master's changes. And now um, master and home branch the local, these two local branches has the same history. Now if git rebase home, it's simply copy the new commits to the master um, from the local home branch. And then all the history are the same. You can just git push, origin master won't reject you. 
Um, this process can be confusing, so let's look at it again. First, Carlotta and Pablo are working on master branch locally and push and pull from the arranging master. Now, father comes in. Carlotta switched to home branch and she published a uh, arranging home branch to the remote. Now, father clon cloned it and they can start working on home local branch. So uh, Pablo is still working on the arranging master and he contributed to uh, commits to arranging master. At the same time, Carlotta and father are working hard. They are contributing to arranging home branch and father needs to rebase to get the newest commits and push to home branch. Carlotta needs to get the father's commit. And before she change to master, she needs to first get the arranging master's history. Then she switch to master, also get the arranging master's history. And now she can get the changes from the home branch locally on her master. Then she commits to arranging master. That's how she merge or rebase back her changes to arranging master. Right, that's mostly um, everything, almost everything. And just want to uh, gi give a reminder to everyone that we have to be very careful with rebase because if we do it on the wrong branch, then the history will be rewrite, rewritten and um, something will have the conflict. So just confirm which branch you are on and to run with base. Okay, that's everything. Thank you guys. I uh, hope all these things are entertaining and uh, useful.